uh, again, I'm glad we went through that, even though we had some troubles because I think it was that important. So again, I hope, you know, again, self-confidence is so important. And again, recognizing what it is. Those are the things that uh, we hope if you're having challenges, you do bring to your mentorship calls. Those are so important for us to wrestle them down and help you with that uh, and, and grow through it because that's really what we have to do. We have to grow through it. So I'm so excited that um, uh, the speaker, Gina, was uh, Ed Milet. Again, great, great uh, question there. If you're not following Ed Milet, he's really good. He's intense. You can see just by his style, he's an intense individual. But uh, check him out. On, he has his Facebook page. He has his own website. Um, really good stuff there. And a lot of it is free. So uh, we enjoy them. Well, anyway, well, welcome everybody. That was our inspiration for the day. It is Monday, March 8th. And uh, wow, the days are getting longer, aren't they? I'm loving it. I'm loving these days and spring is around the corner. I just kicked into my allergy medicine. So you know it's coming. But uh, I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, for those of you that are new, we are so glad you're here. Each week we get together and we share, and this is about learning and sharing about our business growth, sharing about um, our team and everything that we are about Optavia. So uh, tonight, let's go. And, right. we're, and we're recording? Yep, we are recording. All right, thank yeah. You. So hey everyone, um, just a couple of quick things. I like to do the announcements at the beginning and so we're not rushing out at the end. Um, just a reminder that we are in active planning stage for our first ever executive director leadership retreat. Um, and that is gonna take place on um, April 23rd, 24th, and then you'll be able to head home on April 25th. Um, we did do a survey in Coaches Out for Change and a poll if you were going to be able to attend, if you meet that qualification or if you were striving for it, if you'll make sure you responded to that because it's going to make a difference on our location and the room size that we have. So that would be awesome. We'll have details and registration for you. We are hoping this week. Um, also wanted to remind you, we mentioned this last week, on Thursday, March 18th, Dan Bell is going to do a business of health coaching presentation just for us, like our organization and everybody who is using the doing well by doing good group. And that is going to be live fed and live streamed directly into the group. There will be no Zoom link or nothing. This is pretty much a invitation only event. So right now I'm working with some of the other uh, leaders and we are hoping to um, do a training for you this Thursday night. So Lauren, that event, the Dan Bell event is Thursday, March 18th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then I'm hoping to get notice for you right away if we are gonna do a training on how to invite to that, that would be this Thursday, the 11th at 8.30 p.m. And we'll get you the info on that. Um, and then just also wanted to remind you, um, a lot of you guys are involved in Fast Track to Freedom. Um, we're doing a weekly mastermind call on that. Meg and Larry um, handled that in the time for you calls last week. Um, just a reminder that, that our second call for that will be this Thursday, March 11th at noon. And then that is immediately followed by Time for You, which is our open forum question and answers with Larry and I, um, Thursdays at 12. 30. Yeah, that was actually fun and uh, really enjoyed it and enjoyed the folks staying on for the time for you. We had a lot of people on that call as well. So uh, again, see you on Thursday on that. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. Back to me. So uh, March, uh, we, we talked about this briefly last week. March is traditionally a great month and guess what? It's looking really good. So guys, just keep doing what you're doing um, and, and stay engaged with your clients. One of the things that, um, you know, as far as March goes, the fast track to freedom, which we just mentioned, it's going well. Um, so I hope that's the case. Can I get a, can I get a yay or a one in the chat if you're enjoying the, uh, the, the speed in which it's going and how you're enjoying it out there? So good. All right. We're starting to see ones come in. So excellent. And if you're not familiar with it, by all means, uh, again, ask your mentorship and uh, we can get you in that no problem. Again, and for any new coaches, that tool is available to you as well. So again, you're, you're not missing anything. And then a reminder, uh, Facebook is the only way, is, is the only way to reach people. What was that again? Only one way. Is only one way, excuse me, I can't read. Only one way to reach people. And one of the things we're gonna talk about a little bit tonight is about planning other activities. 
okay? So there's lots of ways for us to connect. We can connect online. We've been doing that so well. And when I mean online, not just in Facebook, but you know, through Zooms, uh, we can do uh, meetings online, okay? Uh, setting up uh, healthy happy hours, whatever they may be uh, to connect with people. And a lot of folks we're starting to see are starting to come out, right? That's praises for that one where, where we went to okay. church. Yeah, I went to church on Sunday, which was kind of cool. It was weird. We had social distancing and everything, but it was just neat to be around other people. So that was really cool. But the point of that is, is that now we want to be ready. We want to be geared up. We want to be um, ready to go and get out there and start connecting with people again with, uh, again, just being uh, recognizing and cognizant of the fact that people may not be comfortable yet. So we, we have to respect that and uh, make sure we address that. But um, Emily Liner, we're going to have her talk a little bit tonight. She had an event just this past weekend, and she, she loves events. And so I, we wanted her to speak a little bit tonight about what, what she's doing and how events work for her. So Emily, um, besides your wonderful, wonderful, she's got the cutest little dog she just got. Oh. Where, <laughs> so it, it, her, it, her dog's blowing up the internet right now. So anyway, <laughs> Emily, take it away. Hey guys. So uh, like Larry said, I love events and um, I have always kind of been um, less of a sharer on social media. Um, up until I began coaching. And so kind of opening up and doing a lot of sharing on Facebook just didn't really feel super natural to me. Um, and I felt like I was just missing connection still. Can you guys hear me? Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, and so I started really trying to kind of branch off of social media and think of different ways I could be creative with having in-person events. Because to me, just having that face-to-face -face connection, there's something powerful um, about that, that you just don't get behind the post. Um, so I've done a number of different things. I kind of started reaching out to like places within my general circle, my chiropractor office and some other chiropractor offices in the area. That was last year, right before COVID hit, unfortunately. So everything kind of shut down. Um, but I didn't give up and I kind of started, you know, thinking about more um, places I could reach out to, places that were still open. Um, and I actually, in August, had a conversation with the owner of um, my gym now and um, kind of told her about what our program is like and um, offered to do maybe an event together and partner together. Um, she was, seemed interested, but then kind of fell off the wagon and I didn't hear from her for a few months. Um, I joined the gym and got very active in the gym, just kind of started going and working out. And she actually approached me first thing in January and she said, you're a health coach, right? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I remembered that we talked before and I would love to partner together and have an event. And so we did that this past Saturday. Um, one of the things that I've noticed with events is you, you generate a lot of like interest and momentum that you wouldn't get from a post. So, you know, everybody on Facebook can see comments and likes and all of that. But when you've got people in person, you know, just on Saturday, there was um, someone that um, two friends that were at the gym together at this workshop. And one of them was like, yeah, sure. I'll do a health assessment with you next week. Um, and the, you know, they kind of were like looking at each other like, Oh, should I do it too? You know? And so there was kind of this like jumping on the bandwagon mentality, like, well, my friend's doing it. So why don't I do it? Like, what do I have to lose? Um, and just like watching the interests of other people um, in person. Um, so there's, there's real power in that. And I think it's it just something to be said for doing face-to-face -face interaction with people. It's just a, a different type of connection that really seems to be nice that people appreciate it, especially now with all the virtual stuff too. Um, and the only piece of advice I would give is just, you know, don't stress about it. Don't, you know, feel like you have to go out of your way to make it some big thing, you know, just kind of explain what the program is and share your story. Um, and don't be afraid if you get shut down the first couple of times. You know, like I said, I reached out to this um, gym back in August and just got to do this event in March. So definitely some timing things there, but um, yeah, be brave, reach out um, to things, places in your circle, people in your circle and um, good luck with events. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. And um, just such a great reminder, you know, what I heard you say was, 
you joined the gym, you got actively involved, got to know people, you kind of made yourself known there. And, um, and that's really what we're about, right? We're about connections and relationships and, and doing things. And I've always been really impressed with, with things you've done. I mean, Emily, didn't you even do something like you just put a post out one day, like, would you like to see me cook some Instapot recipes <laughs> and just did like a Facebook live or a zoom event, just doing healthy recipes, right? Yeah, I actually did that with a friend and client of mine. So we just cooked on camera on Facebook Live one night and made some lean and green recipes. And that was super fun. And I ended up getting a client from that event actually too. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I mean, that's what, you know, if you think about Apple or any, any company, right, they're constantly thinking of new marketing ideas, new products, new, new ways to connect with people. And, um, and that's just really what we wanted to, to show an example of is because I think sometimes we can get into that loop of just using social media, which can be an incredible powerhouse tool, but there's so many other ways as well. Yeah. It's just, I think it's just the timing. I mean, people just, they want something different right now. They want a different way of doing community. And I think that's a lot of it. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to spend a little bit of tonight, time tonight talking about, especially because we have Dan Bell's training coming up on the business of coaching is actually talking about how do we awaken others to the idea of coaching and actually helping to move them forward to the point that they actually want to explore it. And then to the ultimate, yes. And if you're, you know, if you've been around for a while and even if you're new to the to, to call, you know, like, there's four things that we do as health coaches. Um, we acquire clients for the health program and we support them through the health program and we acquire clients for the, or uh, sponsor coaches and then support them in, in, um, in developing and their businesses. And it, it is all inclusive. You know, that it's really not one or the other when we become coaches because we, our program is healthy body healthy mind and healthy finances. And so as we lead into this discussion tonight, and you'll see our team calls, like the past couple of weeks, we talked about acquiring clients, then it was supporting clients. So we're moving into that next phase, um, is that so much of this is gonna be your belief system and your mindset. So your success with sponsoring, if it, whether you feel like you're good at it or not so good at it yet, is really based on your belief system and your comfort level and really just building experience talking about coaching with other people. And I wanna start off with um, Lauren Yeomans. Um, Lauren is just awesome and how she had a huge shift in her own mindset. And once she did, she is really masterful at connecting with people quickly. And Lauren's coaches come on within, I don't know, Lauren, you'll have to, I don't know if you have an average, but I'd say within like one, one to three weeks, Lauren's Lauren's clients become coaches. So Lauren, I want you to just take it away and share your wisdom and insight with us. Dan Kirk's cracking me up in the chat here. Um, yeah, you know, and I, I will say I had a big shift in this. Um, many of you probably have heard me talk about this, but when I went to convention and I really, that was within my first couple months of coaching and I really just um, fell in love with coaching, just like I fell in love with being a client. And I wanted everybody, just like I wanted to shout from the rooftops after a month of being on program and being in fat burn and how good I felt. I felt that way about coaching. I wanted everybody to know that this was something that they could do. And um, so I really believe in bringing this up early and often. And so for me, the first touch point where I typically talk about coaching is in the health assessment. And there's a couple key questions in there that I want you to key into and make sure that you ask. Um, and one is, what are you, you know, what do you do for work and do you enjoy it? Um, that's a really good insight because a lot of people, even if they have a high power job, even if they are making a lot of income, they may not be happy. They may not have the freedom that they really want in their life. And maybe they are doing something that they're really enjoying. And maybe it's really similar to what we do as coaches. And this could be another avenue for them. Um, and so I love asking that question. And then I love um, when it says, who in your world would you like to get healthy with you? And that's always a great um, insight because that person may become a client right away for, under you that they do the program with maybe someone who's going to watch them for the first week or two and kind of see what results they have and then jump on board with them. And maybe that's the time that this new client of yours is going to step into the coaching role and coach that person that they love and they want to get healthy. Um, and so, and then when I'm placing their order and I'm helping them get started, what I usually say is, oh, and one more thing, um, what you're going to find is that you're gonna um, start on the program and within a couple of weeks, you're already gonna be feeling amazing and people are already gonna start noticing. 
And what I love to let people know even now is that um, the opportunity to come alongside me and coach the people that you know and love um, is available to you. And I tell them, this is one of the things that has helped me be successful um, on our program and for the long term. And it's so fun. It's been a blast. And so I always like to just let you know, I know that this might be overwhelming right now because you're just about to start on your own journey, but I always like to let you know that this is possible for you. Um, and then at the one week mark, how many of you guys are doing celebration or tips calls at the one week mark? Um, so strongly recommend that. And you guys, I do this. I bring my um, clients to Meg at their one week mark. And that is a time that they get to hear from not just me, but from somebody else about the coaching opportunity. And it can be dripped one more time. And a lot of times, and you know, I do a lot of celebration calls with my coaches clients. Um, I just did one today and she was like, so excited. Actually, it was one of Dana Jamie's clients. She was so excited about her journey. She was two weeks in and I mean, she could not stop talking about her non-scale victories and how excited she was. And she was like, everybody needs to know about this. Do you know why I bring on clients really often in that first month? It's because that is when their passion is so contagious. They are so excited. They got into fat burn for the first time. They have energy that they haven't had in forever. And they're starting to see a change. I asked her, I said, when was the last time you felt this good? She said, at least seven years ago. And this was, in, this was her two week, she, we did a two week celebration. And so I said, how would it feel? Like who's someone, or I don't remember exactly all that I said, but I said, how would it feel to help somebody in your world feel as good as you do? And she's like, oh my gosh, that would feel amazing. I said, you know, I can totally see you being a coach. I see your passion for the program. I mean, you are just exuding being enough to be a coach. You know, can I add you to a group so you can find out more about that? And then can we hop on a call in the next few days where we can, where you can just explore the idea of it and find out some more. And she was like, oh my gosh, that sounds great. So, you know, we're getting her added to the doing well by doing good group. And we're going to follow it with the coach explore. And so I love asking that question. I love saying, would you be open to the idea of coaching? Because if you typically ask like, Are, would you want to coach? You know what they're going to say? They're going to be like, no, I don't see myself as a coach. Like, what are you talking about? Most of the time, sometimes they might be like, well, sure, but um, not often. So, but I love asking that question. Would you be open to the idea of exploring health coaching? Um, and that works, that works really well. And then get them on a schedule, a coach explore. You guys, they are not scary. They are so fun. Schedule, schedule a coach explore with your FIBIC. Um, and, you know, and, and talk about just on a zoom call like this, open up the idea of coaching with them, find out why it could fit a need in their world. Um, and, and it's, it's so fun. It's so fun to be able to answer their questions, talk about their fears, what's holding them back, and then talk about the solution to how this could really change their life. Um, and then I always like to ask when, um, during that time that they're talking about their fears or their concerns, I always like to ask, you know, maybe it's social media. Maybe they're afraid to post on social media. How many of you guys have heard that one? <laughs> um, or how many of you felt that way when you started coaching? Um, and so something I love to ask is what is the worst thing that could happen with you sharing your journey and what's the best thing that could happen? And nine times out of 10, they're going to, they're going to say, oh my gosh, someone that I love could, their life could be changed. Like mine has. And I'm like, would that be worth it to put yourself out there? Um, so I think just not being afraid when they express a concern, because that is normal, but helping guide them through that concern and through how maybe you relate to that and then being able to um, help guide them to making that decision and that yes. Um, and tell me, I'll tell you, I hear no a lot. I heard no about setting up a coach explore probably five times today, but I did set up two. So, so you will hear no a lot and that's okay. You just keep going. Cause I said no a couple of times before I said yes. And I'm sure you guys did too. So anyway, I'll pass it back to you, Dee. Thank you, Lauren. Um, you know what? I was just jotting down notes, you guys. I mean, this is why we attend trainings, right? Like we learn all the time and just hearing that little nuances and the verbiage she used. Um, if that was really helpful to you, just give show uh, Lauren some love in the comments. Cause that with the chat, cause that was 
Awesome. And Lauren and I did a training a while back about the who, what, why of, of sponsoring. And I'm going to include a link to that in when I play this, re, uh, post this replay so that you guys can take a look at that again. But we thought we might show a few slides from it in case you want to screenshot it. Um, and just a few of the main ideas about sponsoring, like who is it for? Um, how do we approach them? And um, Larry and I are just going to kind of bounce back and forth between them. So um, hang on for a minute. Hopefully it'll work better than it did last time. Oops. That didn't work. Hold on. Oops. Did it open? Yeah, it was open. Whiteboard. That's an easy time. Well, this is always why you have a backup plan. We printed our screens, <laughs> our things, so we can just talk through it. But Larry, you want to talk about the, you know, why do we offer it and who, who could benefit from it? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, just to piggyback on what Lauren was saying, you know, the offering of coaching, I, I think everybody knows the, the benefit is accountability, right? And we want to offer coaching, not just for accountability, but there's us, other key things that we want to talk about for, again, the other individual, the potential coach. And that is, again, to have more impact, right? Have more impact in the world. They have a, uh, a gift, right? If they would share that with others, then others can get well and get healthy. In addition to that, we, we offer time freedom. You know, when you think about families that are struggling, running around, jobs, kids, that kind of stuff. Um, the flexibility that we offer as health coaching is so key. Um, health insurance, right? You know, it's, and when we say health insurance, it's insurance for you staying healthy, right? For individuals to be healthy. And I can't emphasize that enough. There's so many uh, parents out there that are unhealthy. And if they go down, if they get sick, what happens to their family and what happens to their work, et cetera? Uh, income, right? It's one thing, income. But in this world, I'm a firm believer dual income is important, okay? So many uh, households rely on one job, one income. Uh, having a second revenue stream is so important these days. So if something happens in the company or the economy, whatever it may be, there's something else that are out there. I know several of the coaches uh, on the, the call tonight, uh, this was important to them to have health coaching that, again, they were able to pivot quickly when they lost a job and, again, invest more in their uh, health coaching. And then community and fun. Uh, again, uh, we have a lot of fun. I know uh, I have maybe too much fun, he says, but uh, again, it's a good time and you're around great people. What else? Um, you know, one of the things um, that I would love you guys to do, just following up on what Larry said, is I think sometimes we get in our own head, like uh, Lauren said, and I love Lauren's question, like, what do you do for work and do you enjoy it? And then Larry alluded to it too, that sometimes I think we can make an assumption like, ooh, like they're an attorney. They make a lot of money. Like, I don't know that they would want to do be a health coach. So as we're moving on, I would love for you to put in the comments, like, what do you, what do you, what's your other, what's your day job or what's, what did you used to do before coaching? Because we have such a diverse yeah. background um, of people that have chosen co coaching. And I know that always helps me when I see that. So your best coaching um, candidates, naturally they're going to come from clients. You know, a good percentage of, um, of the Optivia coaches are clients first for the exact reasons that Lauren said. They're excited, right? They're enthused. They become a walking billboard. So a huge percentage come from there. But I entered for the business side of it. Somebody knew I had a passion for health and wellness and approached me about doing this. And I'm so grateful that they did. And many other coaches on this call are people that I approached um, that were not clients first. They did become clients, but whatever. So when you're thinking about coaching, you really want to be thinking about offering to clients, but also think outside your world, who else could benefit from this? Um, somebody who is health-minded, maybe somebody who recently is in transition, lost a job, a stay-at-home mom, that's what I was, that wanted to return to the workforce, retirees, and then all those people Larry mentioned that need more time, money, impact, want to make more impact, they want to make a difference in the world, all of those are your best candidates. So when to talk about the opportunity, Lauren kind of touched on that. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, just to reiterate, you know, so uh, health assessment, you know, that's the great time to find out again, that information about your client, you know, what is it uh, that they do for a career? Do they like it? Do they dislike it? And also trying to identify if income or the stress from lack of income, right, it is having an impact on their life. So that's a, a good one. Like when they say they can't afford their next order. They can't afford <laughs> their next order or um, we're stressed, we can't swing things, that kind of stuff. Uh, journey kickoff again a great time again to talk about it and, and see if that's um, you know if they're open to it right that's what we're trying to find if and Dan Bell would say if they're if their windows open to it and that's what we're trying to find um, weekly calls be again be that detective identify the need okay and you're you're gonna uh, that's one thing is health coaching we we need to be detective for everything how they're doing on plan is probably the first thing that we're detective on. You can sense if your client is giving you generalities as far as how their week was, right? And, and then trying to pinpoint what's going on in their life as far as their plan. But then again, you'll hear the other things, the financial stresses, the challenges maybe with a job, the challenges with um, just making ends meet, that kind of stuff. And then lastly, uh, referrals. Referrals are a great way to talk about the business. You know, so if somebody is talking about their, their journey and they're looking great and you can mention referrals, but oh, by the way, you can coach them if you'd like. And I'd love to show you how to do that. So that's a great way to lead into that. Yeah, 100%. And then with those people outside of Optavia that aren't your clients, anytime that intuition strikes you, when you think of somebody, write their name out. And then we've got, the, of course, the training on how to approach somebody to see if their window is open on it. Um, and when you offer coaching, you know, one, I just really, really encourage you to be objective, to not let your own story or, or the thoughts or um, prejudgment about somebody, whether or not they'd be interested or your fear of what they might think of you get in the way. 100% always be thinking about other people and listen to your intuition. If your intuition is saying, I need to talk to them about coaching, just drum up the courage to do it. And just like Lauren said, I mean, we get a lot of no's, a lot of not yet's. Um, a lot of people on this call said no to me a lot of times. Um, but it's, a, it's in the power of consistency. Like Lauren said, many times you're rocking their world the first time you've said it. They came to you know, lose some weight. They never thought they might be, become a health coach. So we are awakening, which is exactly what we said before. And then we wanna use the tools of the tips calls and the explore calls, um, invite them to events like, like Emily said. Um, but that would be the, the real big, um, the big times. And, um, and just, I want you, if, you're, have you been, if you've been uncomfortable talking about coaching, let yourself be a beginner. So just like you were when you first started talking about the health program, you're probably a lot better at it now. Every time you start to talk about coaching, you're going to get better at it. So just recognize that you can't say the wrong thing to the right person or the right thing to the wrong person. So you really just want to make it part of your normal vocabulary in every conversation that you have. Absolutely. Yeah. Just because we're health coaches doesn't mean we've figured it all out yet. We're still working on it. We're a work in progress. So... Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Um, again, just uh, so thankful for all you guys being on the call tonight. Um, as always, we have Dr. A after that and then field training and then Dan's call at nine. Um, again, appreciate it. Uh, looking great this month. So keep up the great work. And again, raise your hand if you need help with anything to your mentorship team. We love you guys. Have an awesome week. Awesome. Thank you to Emily and Lauren. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye.